Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. I hope you're all having a great day. It's a little bit rainy here, so today I thought I'd show you this cute little rainy day card using some Lawn Fawn products. So let's get started with the Lawn Fawn Rainbow Paper Pack. I'm using that teal color, and then I'm going to take the outside in stitched rectangle stackables, and I'm taking the largest one, and also the outside in stitched heart stackables, again the largest one from that collection as well. So I'm going to go ahead and run that through my die cutting machine. Again, I'm using this beautiful teal color, and I'm going to run it through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine, and you can see it leaves that beautiful stitched edge. Now I'm going to center this heart, and then I'm going to run that through as well. And that's going to die cut this beautiful heart out of the center of that panel. We're going to put that blue piece aside for now. And then I'm going to take the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100-pound uh, cardstock and run that through my machine. And now we're going to substitute that teal-colored heart for this white one. Now with the little picket fence border, I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, little collection of borders along the bottom of the heart. We're also going to use the stitched hillside border, and I want the borders that match up to the angle on that fence. And I want this to come just below the fence, and so I'm just positioning it on my paper. These panels are four and a quarter by five and a half, just to make it easier. Just, I cut all the panels the same size. And then I'm going to grab the grassy hillside borders, again matching up that angle with the fence, because we're going to have grass on either side of this fence, and then a little bit of like a, a path, a dirt path below it. So I'm just double checking where I want to line that up on the paper, and this is all kind of a guesstimate for now because we can adjust everything uh, a little bit later. And now I'm grabbing another one of those grassy hillside borders, just one that kind of goes in a different angle. And you can see there that we have all the pieces and how those are going to line up one on each other. So we have four panels there. So I'm going to start off with this little stitched border. And I'm going to take the gathered twigs and the ground espresso. These are both Distress Oxide inks. And I'm just going to speed this up to show you that I just laid a nice thick layer of the, gra uh, the gathered twigs uh, on this panel, just kind of blending it out. And then I'm coming in with the ground espresso, and I'm just going to add some little areas of darkness along the top of that um, little border there, and maybe a little bit down the sides. And just kind of blending that together as best I can here. Now I'm going to take that ground espresso and I'm just going to press the pad right into my mixed media mat. And then I'm going to spray that with a little bit of water. That's the dis Distress Sprayer. And then with a, a paintbrush here, I'm just going to spatter some little uh, splotches on here. I want to make it kind of look like dirt, uh, like a dirt path. So I'm just spattering that, and you know how messy I am with my spattering, so I got it all over everything as usual, but I carried on anyway. So then I grabbed the, uh, the uh, Citron Distress Oxide, and I'm also going to be using the Lucky Clover. So I'm just laying that all down, just kind of like a layer of each, the darker up at the top of this grassy border here. And then I'm coming in with the uh, Citron uh, applicator and just kind of blending that out. I just want a little bit of light and dark on that. And I did the exact same thing for the other panel. Now I'm using the Distress Pumice Stone ink. This is not an oxide. I just wanted a little light, lighter touch than the oxide. And I just want to add a little bit of color to the tops of that fence, just for a little dimension. Now using the tumbled glass and the peacock feathers, again back to the oxide inks, I'm going to apply that tumbled glass. I'm just trying to determine about how far I need to come down with that. And I'm just going to apply that all over the top of this little heart shape here. And then I'm going to go ahead, after I have that completely coated, I'm going to add some of the peacock feathers just sort of up along the top edge there. And I want to get a nice thick coating of that. And then again, I'm going to go back to the tumbled glass applicator and just blend those two together. 
Now, again, going back to the Distress Sprayer, I'm going to spritz that panel a little bit, and then I'm going to blot that off with a paper towel, and you'll see that it leaves these beautiful kind of like splotches on here. So now I want to just kind of see how everything is going to line up here. I'm going to take the, the little grassy border and just with my fingers, I'm just kind of pressing those little blades of grass up a little bit just to add a little bit more dimension to the grass. Now I'm just going to lay this out just to get an idea of what I want this to look like. And then for that little uh, path, I'm going to end up bringing that down just a little bit here so that a little bit more of that grass would show. So now I'm going to use the Lawn Fawn glue tube and I'm going to glue all these panels together. And you can see how this scene is going to start to come together a little bit here. I love all these elements that can use to build these fun scenes with with the grass and the fences and the roads and everything. There, there's so many choices now. It makes it really fun to build these little scenes. So now you can see that that looks pretty good there. So I've cut a card, a standard A2 size card, and I'm just using my bone folder just to press out that crease. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to see where that heart panel is going to need to be placed on my card. So I'm just temporarily taping this down with some uh, post purple tape and I'm just going to use that as my guide to glue this heart back into place. So I made sure that that teal piece of paper was centered exactly on my card and now I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. This makes it a lot easier to get that centered properly. Now I can remove that purple tape and lift that panel back up off of the uh, card here. So again, this is a standard A2 size card, so it measures five and a half by four and a quarter. And now I want to see that panel. I'm going to need to cut a little bit of those borders off because they're going to show. So I'm using my Tim Holtz uh, scissors. These are the mixed media scissors, and they're really good for cutting through something that's very thick like this. And I'm just going to clip away any excess that I don't need. So now when I position that on my card here, I've got, I've got enough cut away so that it won't show outside of that, that teal frame here. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Now I want that to sit and dry for a minute or two here, so I'm just going to put some acrylic blocks on here just to let it dry. Now I'm going back to that teal frame, and I'm going to just cut some scotch foam tape. I'm using the one inch tape so that I can cut it into these narrow strips. So I cut it into about one eighth inch strips here. And then I put that tape all over the back of this panel. And I'm going to remove the backing and then I'm going to just position this. I want to make sure it's centered. So I'm using the heart as the guide. So follow the lines of that heart because you've already uh, done all the hard work by positioning it earlier. So you just follow the lines of the heart and then uh, press it in place. So now I'm going to use the images, this little elephant, that umbrella, that little splash, the mouse, and that little bird from this set. And this is the Elfie Selfie set. And it also has coordinating dies. And then from this set here, I'm going to be using that little water. I'm going to use it as a little puddle of water. And this is from the Ahoy Matey set. And it also has the coordinating dies. I'm just going to use my VersaFine Onyx Black ink and an acrylic block. And I'm going to just stamp three of these because I want three little puddles. And then for the umbrella, I'm going to stamp six of these, and I'll tell you why in a minute here. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp the little uh, elephant and the mouse, that cute little mouse, and the bird. So now I've got two sets of the umbrellas. And with the light pink and the wine red, these are the Zig Clean Color Markers. This is a water-based marker. 
I'm going to lay down that color first, the lighter color first. Then I'm going to come in with the darker wine red and just apply it towards the top. And then using the lighter marker, I'm just going to pull those two colors together. And I did the same exact thing for the other one. Now I'm using lemon yellow and orange. And again, I'm laying down the lightest color first. Then I'm applying the darker, the orange color. And then I'm just going to use that lighter color again to blend these two together. Now you could use a water brush here. I just didn't want the color to get too, too light. So now I'm using fluorescent green and green. And it's the same, same exact technique as the other two. So not a lot of shading here, just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of, uh, of color here at the top. And then I'm cleaning off my pen. If it gets a little too dark, just clean off your pen and continue to color. So now I'm just going to set those aside and let those dry. And I'm going to do this little bird. I'm going back to the light pink and the wine red, the same colors we used on that little umbrella. And I'm just going to apply the light pink and then a little bit of the darker wine red. And I didn't want it to get too, too dark, so I did decide to use my water brush here to blend those together so that I could keep the, the tummy area of the bird uh, on the lighter side. And I'm just blotting it off if I'm getting too much color, just blotting off that uh, water brush. And now I'm going to take the lemon yellow and the orange again, and I'm just going to do the beak. So now we'll let that set and dry. Now for this little elephant, I'm going to be using the gray brown and the light gray. So I'm starting with the lighter gray. Then I'm going to come in with this darker color. And then with the water brush again, because I again I didn't want it to get too dark. I'm just going to blend it out with the water brush. And then for his little cheek there, I'm going back to that light pink and I'm just going to add a little to the ears and a little to his cheeks and just blend that out as well. So now I'm going to do the little mouse and I'm going to be using beige and mid brown. Starting with the lighter beige color. Basically the same exact technique we used for the little elephant there. And again going back to my water brush and blending those out. And again, a little bit of pink on the cheeks. And that one is all set. So now for these little puddles of water, I'm going to be using light blue and turquoise green. And I'm just going to lay that light blue down on the entire thing. And then I'm going to use the turquoise green just kind of around the edges a little bit, just to add a little shadow so that it'll, the water will be the lightest in the center there. And just quickly blending that out. And again, I'm using the water brush to do the blending here. And I did the same thing for the other two. Now I'm going to use my Sizzix Sidekick machine and run all those little pieces through this little die cutting machine. And if you haven't used this little thing yet, I just love this. It's so easy to run all these little pieces through here. And now I've got everything die cut. So for those umbrellas, that's the only uh, one set I ran through the die cutting machine. The other set, I'm just going to cut out with my scissors because I want to pop those up a little bit over the die cut ones. So I'm just cutting out the umbrella portion, the colored portion, 
And then I'm going to put a little foam mounting tape on the back of each of those little pieces and pop it up over top of the one that we die cut. I probably didn't need to completely color the one underneath, but I thought if if somebody did look towards the side, at least you can kind of see that it was colored in. So then those will add a little bit more dimension that way. So now what I'm going to do is try to lay out my scene here. And I kind of wanted them to look like they were playing outside, playing in the, the puddles in the rain, kind of like we used to do when we were kids. The wetter and muddier, the better. So now I've got all those little uh, pieces in place, and I'm just going to kind of glue everything down. Um, you will notice that because some of the pieces are on the inside of the heart, uh, I will need to put a little photo mount or foam mounting tape on those as well, just to make sure that they uh, they pop up properly. And I'm putting a little on the back of each of these critters as well, just to make them a little more dimensional. So I'm going to go ahead. Now on that umbrella there for the elephant, I did need to put a second piece of foam mounting tape on it. I just thought it, it wasn't laying perfectly flat. So off camera, I did add another little piece there. Now for these others, I just went ahead and again, put a little photo mounting tape on each one and on the umbrella and position them down. And I just think these little guys are so cute. And what's nice is all three of these are from the same Elfie Selfie set. So you kind of have a nice variety of the little critters from that set. So now I'm going to go ahead and put that little mouse. And I thought it would be cute if the umbrella was being held by his little tail here. So now we have the, the scene laid out. And now I wanted to add the... Uh, little bit of a splash like they were jumping in the puddles and making a splash so I took the peacock feathers ink again and I put took the water that is supposed to be coming from the, the the spray from the elephant but I thought it would make a cute little splash so I just inked it up and applied a little bit uh, stamped it on each of those little areas there now for the spring showers dye collection I'm gonna grab the medium uh, cloud, the small cloud, and the raindrops. And I went ahead and die cut those. Now I'm going to take the tumbled glass distress oxide and I'm just going to add a little bit of color down at the bottoms of each of those little clouds there. Just so they'd look a little bit more like rain clouds. And I did that for all three of those. So now I just want to position those up towards the top. And I'm going to glue those down. And again, I'm using a combination of the uh, foam tape on the side that's going to be within the heart and then just the glue on the, uh, on the frame portion, just so it would lie uh, flat and level. So now I'm going to do the same thing for these other two. So now I just have to determine where the little raindrops are going to go. So I did take my Marvy tool, uh, jewel picker here just to make it easier to pick up these little pieces. It has like kind of like a little sticky end on it, and it really makes it easy to pick up little tiny paper pieces or rhinestones or beads or anything like that. So I positioned all those kind of where I want them to be. Now I'm coming in with the glue, and I'm just going to glue each of those down. And you can see how easy that jewel picker makes it to glue everything in place. So I'm taking the Spectrum Noir uh, sparkle pen in the crystal clear, and I'm going to go ahead and add some sparkle to all of those clouds and those little puddles, and then a little bit to the tops of each of the umbrellas there. You do have to be careful here when you're pulling the colors you want to make sure you clean the sparkle pen in between colors so that you don't contaminate 
uh, the color on the next one that you're coloring in because it remember it is a water-based uh, ink. So now I decided for those little rain drops to use the uh, Seabreeze Jewel Drops from Nuvo. And I'm going to go ahead, it's kind of like a blue, like a light blue color. And I thought it would give the uh, each of the raindrops a little bit of a blue tint rather than trying to put ink on each of those little drops, which I think would have been almost impossible. So I decided just to do this, and it, it came out really cute. It did add a little bit of that bluish tint to them. And then for the little beak on that little birdie, I'm using the Nouveau Crystal Drops, which is just a crystal clear glaze, just to give it a little shine. And now for my sentiment, I was lucky enough to get my new uh, Lawn Fawn Easter stamps. I just got them on Friday, so I haven't done much with them, but I decided to grab one of the sayings from them. And uh, this is the, um, the collection is called the Lawn Fawn Extra Amazing Easter. And it comes with the stamps and the matching coordinating dies. So I went ahead and stamped this, wishing you a fun day. I thought it was perfect for this card. And then I'm just going to take my Tonic uh, Tim Holtz trimmer. And this is why I bought this trimmer, is because I can cut something that's so narrow like this. I just wanted a little tiny sliver of a banner here. And I was able to easily cut it with this trimmer. And I'm just going to angle it with my scissors. Kind of like one angle going one way and one the other and just add that with a little bit of glue down towards the bottom of my card here so i just think these little guys are so cute this was a fun card to make and you can see that we have a lot of sparkle there and some dimension from the glaze that we put on all those little raindrops and then the little 3d umbrellas so I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thank you so much, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.